Recovery Channel, where life's pains are healed. your children and they will trace it back to you that they will say oh yes i know your father i know your mother i know you are from this family because i know that your mother have trained you well i know you will not do otherwise god has no plan to destroy your life god has no plan to close the heaven against you he just wants your attention and make adjustments that's all God is not in the noise, he's in the still small voice. Too much noise. Not there. percent of the things you hear they are lies fabricated lies they make you lose your peace do you know there are some people who have this gift of making you to commonize your own blessing they just have the gift when you say ah someone that me ten thousand they don't keep quiet they'll give you like two hours they say when they say they that's you ten thousand you'll keep quiet when somebody give me five hundred thousand they talk That is what they call the battle of testimonies. <laughs> amen. I said amen. So just, just be very careful how people just tell you what don't exist. <laughs> Somebody told me, said they went to see a governor. The governor gave him 200,000 US dollars. I said, whoa, 200. Wow, you're blessed. You're blessed. Ah, I will heal him. I said, what would you do with the 200,000? I said, ah, should you leave him more? You leave him. So something that happened a few months later, he starts said about the governor. I said, ah, What happened? He said, Don't mind all this governor. When they come around, you don't give, you just go, you pray, pray. That, that was how I went to see the other night. She, she didn't give me. I, I became confused. I said, But you said he gave you 200,000. He said, oh, Okay, oh, uh, that was another governor. Ah. Put your hand on your chest. Say, I will not have high blood pressure. For what does not exist. I thank God for my own. Put your hand in your chest. I thank God for my own. I know my own is genuine. And I thank God for my own testimony. I will not lose my peace. Over audio. Is it audio money? Amen. In Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Philippians 6, 7. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So what God is saying to us this morning is this. Don't let anything worry your mind. As you are presenting the things that are your need, be thankful. Thank him for yesterday, what he did yesterday. Then you now present the new one to him. That's why if you have not done thanksgiving, you are in error. You are in error. We are not thanking God that everything worked this year. But there are things that worked this year. Are you with me? This morning, myself and Pastor Lucy will be doing our thanksgiving. I lost my brother-in-law, Pastor Lucy's elder brother. He was somebody dead to us. Are we thanking God he died? No. But is that the only thing that happened? No. There were many great things that happened for us this year. So we are thanking God for the good ones. Come on, talk to me. The one that happened that is negative, we can't expect, we leave that one. We cannot judge God with one negative effect. After all, people will still die. Is there anybody that will not die? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Do you know that some people, because of just one thing their friend did, they cut him off. 
What about all the good things he has done? You are judging the case. Eh, hey, that's how she's always shouting on me. Always shouting on me. Always shouting on me. Always shouting. You, you discuss with somebody. Discuss with somebody. Discuss with somebody. Do you know that? Discuss me. Discuss me. Discuss me. I'm telling you, always discuss me. Discuss me. You did tell the person you are judging that the shoe that we are wearing to judge him. Now that shoe, the shoe. You spoke for 30 minutes. All you said were the negatives. What about the positive? When the person took you home when you were naked, standing, did you say it? When the person, you went to the person to borrow money, he dashed you money. Did you, why did you say it when you are getting angry? There's somebody they leave a church. It's the one negative thing they will sing and talk when they were in that church. All the good things the church did for them. When they were sick, they went to pray, helped them, assisted them, did everything. They didn't say any of that. It's an unthankful generation that they judge you with one thing, but they forget the other good things you said you've done. Learn to be thankful. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Don't let the things around that are not working. He said, but in everything, with thanksgiving, what is the thanksgiving? You look back. Lord, as I stand before you today, I thank you that in January, when I was stranded, I had no accommodation. You gave me a miracle and you gave me a house. I thank you for that. I thank you also, Lord, in the month of March, when everybody was mocking me, laughing at me, that I won't be able to pay my mother's rent, you intervened. I give you praise for that. Lord, I also thank you that when my child fell ill in the month of August, you stood for me. In that hospital, when the doctors didn't know what to do, you brought your healing power, and the case and the situation changed, and the child is alive. I thank you. I thank you. I might not have the best. I might not be with a job. But Lord, I just want to thank you for these three things you did for me this year, 2019. In all, in thanksgiving. In thanksgiving. That means you are thanking God. Make your request known unto him. Now, Lord, I want to say in 2020, you intervened for me in 2019. I mentioned what you have done. Now, Lord, in 2020, I need a job. You don't come before God. God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Lord, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Lord, I give you three more words. Or else I will go and put my hand in idol. The way things are going, the way things are going. My friend asked me to go to a native doctor. I said no. But Lord, I'm only giving you three more. So I'm just telling my mind. I'm just telling my mind. I'm just telling my mind. Are you going to be God? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? 2020. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for all the things that have worked for me. Why are we thanking God? We are thanking God because there were things he did. He is worth thanking. Just because you are broke in December doesn't mean you should carry enmity and malice to the house of God. December is just one month of all months. Are you not childish to carry a frown because you are broke? You didn't have money to take your friends out to drink? Are you not childish? What is rice? Have you not eaten rice before? What is chicken? Have you not eaten chicken before? Because you couldn't go for one show, your eyes are red. You couldn't change your shoe and your dress, your eyes are red. What about the previous years? What about the good times? The great times? Why would you use one month to judge your God? One month, one month. Are you not petty? Are you not cheap? To use three months to judge your God? You were broke the last three months doesn't mean that January, February, March will be broke. I remember when I bought my first house, my mom came to celebrate with me. We managed to entertain them. I had to borrow a member's car that season. The day my mom left for Benin, I returned the member's car. We were just broke. There was not one error in the house. It was December. They did Christmas with us. A friend who promised to borrow me his car switched off his phone, locked his gate. I went to his house on Sunday, knocked at his door. He did not even open his door. My mother said to me, say, my son, don't stress yourself. We are glad that this year ends well. If it's only this, let's thank God and forget everything. Are you hearing me? Because a few months before, Robert stole, stole my Jeep. So I was using an old dilapidated car, just trying to get a bag. But can I tell you something? In the midst of the whole dryness, there's a house I could thank God for. I am not forgetful about the house. So we were broke that Christmas. There was no cash, there was no money, there was no car. But there was something we could say at least for this one. Thank you. 
And you know what? The following year, it was January ending, a friend saw me and said, ah, come and meet me to, next week by Friday. Mm -hmm. I want you to come, come to the driver. That same weekend, that same weekend, most of you are aware, a friend of mine invited me for lunch in Maryland. We were eating. He said, man of God, I'm relocating to the U.S. And that's why I invited you. It was even a member of this church, a lady. She doesn't worship with us right now. She was even the one that drove me for that, that lot. I didn't have a car. You know what he said? He said, I want to sell my car. I said, I need it. I'll buy it. He said, ah, Pastor, you are making it difficult. Will you buy our car? I said, okay. How much are you selling the car? He said, 600000 I said, I will buy. I need a good car. He said, ah, but Pastor, we have used it. I said, I don't care. She said, okay, 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 okay. We'll give you the car. Do you know what? We finished the lunch. I was on my way home. We were just climbing the Bermu Bridge when I got a text message on my phone. He said, after you left, my wife and myself, we discussed. And we said, why must we sell a car to you? We want to sow it into your life. Pick it up. <laughs> Send somebody to come and pick it up. Wow. Now, the, that was a Passat. Remote, new modern Passat. Air conditioner. I was so happy. I called Pastor Oksa. I said, see what has happened. The same weekend again, this other brother. Do you know what? In one weekend, Friday, Saturday, on Sunday morning, I had a Mercedes uh, Formatic 500. Then it was 11 million. was given to me as a gift. Passat on Friday night. Uh, Formatic on Saturday morning. On Sunday, two cars were parked. But one month before, there was nothing like that. There was not even a picture. Not even a hope. Most of you here right now, you don't even have hope. But that doesn't mean that your condition is hopeless. It's not at all. It's not at all. your children and they will trace it back to you that they will say oh yes i know your father i know your mother i know you are from this family because i know that your mother have trained you well i know you will not do otherwise god has no plan to destroy your life god has no plan to close the heaven against you he just wants your attention and make adjustments that's all God is not in the noise, he's in the still small voice. Too much noise. It's not there. is taking to a better place we are we must not be like the children of israel when god takes you see life is about a process god takes you to process sometimes where god is taking you from there's a transition it's like a wilderness and it looks dry don't make the mistake when you are in that wilderness to begin to say can god no the language should be god can no can god the language should be God can. Your wilderness should not frighten you. Do not doubt the possibility working power of God. Are you all listening to me? Is somebody hearing me? You might be without a job today. You might be without a business right now. But that doesn't stop the hand of God for making things happen in your life. God doesn't need a job to pay your rent. He didn't need a bakery to give them bread, manna. Neither did he need an abattoir to give them flesh or meat. He provided. This is the aspect where Christianity demonstrates the supernatural working power of God. 
So without a job, your rent can be paid. Without a job, God can take care of your bills. Without a job, God can still pay your bills. Without a business, God can still do stuff in your life. Are you hearing me? So cease from that frown. Be anxious for nothing. So I say nothing. Thank him, everyone. Just lift up your hand and just praise him. Thank you. Thank you. As a family, thank you. We're not thanking because everything is perfect. We're thanking God because in thanking him, things will become perfect. When Jesus took few bread, give me, give me like two or three Bibles. Give me like two, three Bibles. Imagine Jesus. This was the crowd. Thank you. Praise the Lord. This was the crowd. Before Jesus, this was a little boy. He brought it to Jesus. It was not enough. It wasn't enough. This is the miracle of Thanksgiving. Jesus lifted it up. The Bible says he knew what to do. When your husband does not measure up, doesn't meet up, lift him up and still thank God for who he is that God gave you a man at the end of the day. He might have all his weaknesses and all his flaws. Thank God. For it. You are shouting your, your own. Do you know what other people are going through there? They're just keeping quiet and looking at you, make mockery of your own home make known your secrets and your nakedness telling everybody about everything that is wrong the people who are married to men who give them HIV they are smiling the women who are married to men who don't feed them they are still smiling are we saying that is right? no but in everything the Bible says give thanks for that is the will of God concerning you when what you have is not enough and you are thankful, God will bring changes. He will bring transformation. He took the few bread and the few fishes. Do you know what Jesus did? He thanked God. He didn't complain. As he took it, he gave it as though it was enough. Use what you have as though it's enough. Thank God for what you have as though it's more than enough. Every time you thank God for the little and you're appreciative and you act, God will give you miracles. Everything start and thank God for what you have as he began to share do you know what happened? he started to multiply everybody seemed to have and at the end of the day there was excess there was excess there was excess you know Smith Wigglesworth if you, if you are a church historian Smith Wigglesworth everybody hear this Smith Wigglesworth was not a Christian but the wife was a Christian Everybody here this. Everybody. The wife was a Christian. Not just a Christian, born again. You know, sometimes when I act as a father, people see it as a weakness. But they don't understand that I operate from the, the hindsight of a father. A father is not a boy. A father doesn't react to things the way is a boy will react. A father sees ahead. A father can see 20 years. He's not looking at now. It's boys that react with now. It's boys that judge with now. But fathers look 10 years, 20, 50 years ahead. The man was, Smith also was not a Christian. But the wife was a Christian. The wife would go to church. And Smith Wiggles will warn the wife, don't ever go to this church again. Don't let me see you with Bible. One day the wife went out. He locked the wife out. And the wife went to the back and entered. Do you know, in all those while she was being persecuted she would laugh she would smile she would praise me spirit goes on one day spirit goes on looked at the woman said what kind of woman are you let me follow you to this your church and that was how he got born again and that man shook the whole of britain he raised 26 dead people conducted healing meetings revival he was used mightily of god but he didn't look it don't judge things with what they are for today. See tomorrow and thank God for today. Can somebody say a big amen? You go to your shop in the morning, your shop does not sell, nothing is working. When we started the Ejibo school, Pastor, when we started the Ejibo school, the Ejibo school was for the first one year, we didn't have more than 10 students. I was complaining. My friend Tom Samson he said, Why are you complaining? He said, This old school ran for one year, only one student. I started thanking God. One ten, I pass you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. One ten. Ah, do you know what? He said he ran the school. He was thanking God for the school. He would go there and anoint the place. 
I said, so how did you pay? You know, with one student, you still pay teacher. I know. He said he kept the place open. Do you know what happened? The following year, the school nearby, something happened. They shut down. All the students moved into his own school. So overnight, he got over 70 children in less than a month. And that was how his school exploded. Everything that is working today at some point was not working. It was not working. Oyedipo said their church for one year was 17 members. Nobody was added. 17 members. But they were thankful. They were thankful. Pastor Sam Adelmi said they got tired. One day he got tired. Where they were doing their church, there was one church, one restaurant. They were cooking. He said he could tell when they put Maggi inside the soup, when they put fish. He said it with his mouth. Nothing was working. He wrote a book that season and better than this. He saw a future. You must look at tomorrow and thank God for today. Stand your feet and begin to thank God, everyone. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. Thank Him. Say, I am strong. Let a voice say, I am weak. Because of the word, the Lord has done. For I am now and now. Let a weak say, Thank you for watching our broadcast. I'm so glad you stayed to the end of this broadcast. I want to invite you for our special services, which I strongly believe is going to be a great blessing to you as you connect to this ministry. Don't just stop at watching. Make an effort to be part of this meeting where the Spirit of God is at work every week touching lives. Now, every Sunday morning we begin our first service at the Kedja Center, number 19, Oba Accra. Now, Ikeja is more a mainland church, so where, wherever you are in the city, you can easily connect. So, for easy connectivity, we can, we, 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 our church is positioned at the mainland, uh, number 19 of Akron. We begin our services there by 8 o'clock in the morning, we terminate by 10. And then, at the headquarter church at Egbeda, number 11, Awari Street in Ekbalaji, bus stop. We begin at Egbeda church from 10. To 12. Now, during the week, we have a special meeting which we tag healing and deliverance, which is every Tuesday morning, 9 to 11. And during that program, we minister to the faith needs of the people, we deal with demonic issues, we prophesy as the Spirit of God gives us the utterance and the supply of the Spirit to minister to the people. And we connect to them and minister to their faith need. As I perceive by the Spirit of prophecy, People and cases are located and they are ministered to. And we have a powerful prayer line where everyone that is part of the program can be ministered to. That's the beauty about the program. Everyone that comes can be ministered to. You are not lost in the crowd. So we have the special prayer line every Tuesday morning at the end of the healing and deliverance service. Now, on Wednesday, we have our midweek service. It's a prophetic service. It starts 6 30 in the evening and terminates to 9. Now, in this meeting, we teach and then the prophetic most times because we are always expecting the Spirit of God to speak after we hear the Word of God to speak back to us and to minister to us. So, as we receive the prophecies and solution, cases are picked and people are ministered to. Now, on Thursday, back to the mainland, 
8.30 in the morning, we have what we call the Breakthrough Fountain. It's a program designed for business people to come for one hour. You know, Jesus talked about praying for one hour. We believe if people can spend an hour in prayer, the power of God will touch them and minister to them. So Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9.30, we have the Breakthrough Fountain. It's an hour of intercession and prayer. A minister, prophetically, cases are mentioned, and those affected are asked to wait to see me one on one. Now I can serve from 9:30 to 12 on Thursday, and that's all for the morning session. Now later in the evening, for those who can make it because of work or school or business, we have an evening session that begins from 6:30 and terminates by 8:15 on Thursday. Now get connected to this program and be part of any of the church services, either the one in the suburb at Egbeda or the one in the mainland. Get connected and I trust God that you will experience the things you see on this broadcast. The Lord bless you. Keep on watching the Recovery Channel.